after Chernobyl, the only public health impact that we have seen has been the more than 6,000 thyroid cancers amongst those people who were children at the time of the accident, drinking contaminated milk. Of those uh, 6,000 or more cases, perhaps 15 had died. It's not a very fatal disease. Thyroid cancer was caught early and treated properly. Then when we think about other effects, actually there's no really good persuasive evidence of any public health impact due to radiation from the accident other than the thyroid cancers. Most people find that kind of hard to believe, but in fact that's the case. Professor Jerry Thomas from London's Imperial College is a world authority on molecular pathology. Um, the health consequences of a nuclear power accident may not be as bad as we first thought. I was anti-nuclear until I started working on Chernobyl. Now, no problem at all. The results of the studies um, that we carried out post Chernobyl, which were big international studies, have, have not been what we might have expected from the outset. Those studies have shown that there is only one thing that we can pin down to being due to radiation, and that's the sharp increase of thyroid cancer in, in those who are very young with exposure to the Chernobyl accident. In the case of Chernobyl, there was a lot of iodine being released and, very important, nobody told the population that this iodine was there and that the milk was contaminated with this iodine. Mothers who didn't know that an accident had happened, these mothers were given contaminated milk to their children. The voice of leading scientific bodies is clear. The only observable public health impact due to radiation after Chernobyl has been the more than 6,000 thyroid cancers, of which only around 15 have proven fatal. As for the emergency workers who received the highest doses, fewer than 50 have died. These numbers, while significant, represent a fraction of the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of victims predicted after the accident. Yes. The whole body doses to 6 million residents is about 9 millisieverts, okay? So each person got about 9 millisieverts. And 80% of that lifetime dose was delivered by 2005. Now, 9 millisieverts is about what any of us will get when we go and have a CT scan. Do we sit there and panic about having a CT scan? No, we don't. And we need to make sure that we keep that in mind when we're talking about accidents like this. We expose ourselves to radiation voluntarily. We can't avoid it. We live in a radioactive world. Naturally occurring background radiation is the main exposure to radiation for most people globally. Levels typically range from 1.5 to 3.5 millisieverts per year. However, there are several places in India, Iran and Europe where doses can be more than 50 millisieverts a year. Medical procedures such as x-rays account for most of the remaining 12% of a typical person's annual dose. In real terms, I doubt there will be any radiological consequences to the whole population at all. The second big impact of Chernobyl was the famous thyroid cancer on children. And this thyroid cancer has happened because the children were drinking contaminated milk. Well, this is not the case in Fukushima. In the mother's nose and children were not given contaminated milk. The milk was controlled. Therefore, we should expect basically not a thyroid impact in Fukushima. By comparison with the frontline workers tackling Chernobyl, the safety provisions were very different for the Fukushima workers. They were very well protected, they have very proper clothes, they have a record of doses, they have control. Now they have had higher doses of radiation than the population outside, but they're an order of magnitude less than the doses that were received by the firefighters and the helicopter pilots in Chernobyl. So I think it's highly unlikely they'll suffer any long-term consequences going forward with the doses that they probably received.